Hello everyone, welcome to GIS Main. I'm Miles Lee. In last few videos, uh, we have talked about how to develop the customer widgets in ArcGIS Experience Builder with ArcGIS API for JavaScript and ReactJS. And we have also talked about how to deploy the complete application of Experience Builder on ArcGIS Total Enterprise. And as we know, some of the widgets are not as simple as what we just talked about in last few videos in reality. Some of them might need the help from external API. For example, like this one, I call it a live traffic camera. It will take the photos of certain locations to reflect the real-time road conditions of such locations. For example, we click on this location and then we click on the pin pop up on such locations. You can see the photos that taken by the on stream camera. And this photo is the real time. You can see now it's 1129 and the photo is just taken two minutes ago. So in order to implement these functions, not only the front end technology introduced in last few videos will be used, but also the backend technology, like what we are going to talk about this time, uh, the AWS serverless technology will need to be used to help to request the external API and then push and store the API on certain places. So uh, let's begin. So firstly, we will need to establish the S3 bucket. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the bucket that I uh, generated in last few videos. If you don't know how to do that, please check my previous video and I've talked about that very detailed. We are going to use the Archis Photo 2 bucket in this tutorial. And then after that, we are going to build up some Lambda functions. But before that, we will need to grant the roles for our Lambda. So we will need to go to I am role. Just click on that. And then click on the roles button. And then click on create role. And then choose Lambda because we are going to use that. And then after that, we will need to use two policy. One is the S3 full access policy. And the other one is the Lambda. The Lambda basic execution role policy. Click next. And then we can see that now we have these two policies to be attached to our role. We just give a name for this role. What we call is, for example, like um, X3 Lambda V1, the version 1. Yep. And then we just create a role. With this role, we can grant our Lambda functions to access to S3 buckets and also execute the read and write operations. So what we are going to do is to go to our Lambda platform. And then we click on create function. We give a name to our Lambda. What we are calling is uh, put geojson because finally we will request the external API to return a geojson to us and then we will forward this geojson to our S3 bucket. So we call put geojson. Yep, and then the runtime. I'm going to use the Python 3.6. Of course, if, if you are familiar with other languages like Ruby, Node.js, Java, you can also choose that. 
uh, rather than Python, I pretty like Node.js, but this time we show how to do it in Python. Okay, so we grant our role, we use the existing role, we just define SV Lambda version 1, and then everything looks good, and we can create the function. You just need to wait for a while for initialization. Yeah. So now the general function framework has appeared. So what we are going to do is to write something here to firstly request the external API and then store the API to S3 bucket. So let's take a look about our API. This is the open data API from our organization. It's free to be used, so welcome to use it. So um, it's very user friendly because what you can see is it has an explorer platform which allow the users to try and experience the APIs online. So uh, what we are going to use later will be the API key and as well as the endpoint of the API. Uh, let's go back to our Lambda function. So we need to import few modules. One is JSON, of course, because we are going to use that to return and process our GeoJSON. And also we will need to use the photo free. And after that we will use to we will need to use the URL library free. This is this is used to request the API. Okay. So what we are going to do is to firstly define our bucket, the bucket name of the S3 will be Archis Portal 2, that's what we just saw. Okay. And then we will need to have the HTTP object from URL library. Then we will use a pre manager to get this. Okay. And then uh, for the authorizations, we will need to use the uh, API key. So uh, we will need to write it here in an object. So here we will give it to the authorization. Oh, by the way, if you if some platform don't provide the online explore platform, um, you can just use a Postman to test your API, and uh, they are same actually. You put the authorizations right here, and then we will also put our API key. So this is our header and then we are going to define our endpoint. The endpoint is this one, you just copy and paste. Of course, I mean different platform provides different endpoints, provide different ways to authorize your application. So I mean this is just a very small thing. Just follow the documentations and guidelines of a certain platforms. Okay, and yeah. So what we are going to do next is to get the HTTP request. We use the get method and we will use our URL just define and the headers we just define as well. Okay, and then what we are going to do next, okay, we can print something, we can say request 
OK here. Yeah, for example, after this, you can see that the request should be fine. And then later on, we are going to forward the results to the S3. We define the results camera from the previous request dot data. The dot data will get the response test. Okay. So here should be equal. And then we will define our output file, which is called camera .geojson. Cameras.geojson. And then after this, we will need to define the stream. Our camera. Okay. Uh, the reason why we need to define the stream is that when we transfer the data to the S3, I mean it will be present in the bytes format. So we are going to use the bytes function to define the stream. So after that, we will use the S3 put object to push our request response to S3 buckets. Okay, so the bucket should be the bucket the key which is our output destination it should be our cameras file and then the body is the bytes is the stream okay and then we will need to also use the ACL to give the public access Otherwise, I mean our application, our front-end application cannot read the data because uh, they are of different domain. Okay, so after this, we just give a tips like uh, finished. Yep, and we just save it and need to click the deploy it. And then we can test. When we are going to do this, uh, it requires an event names. For example, we just say put geojson event. Okay. And create. We can test right now. Test events. Uh, S3 is not defined. Let's go back and take a check. Oh, yeah. We just forgot to. Yeah, we just forgot to define the S3 on top. Okay, so this is from the bottom three module. Yeah, to define the S3 object, and then after that, we can use the S3 object to push our binary stream to S3. So now we save it deployed it and test it yeah this time should be okay yeah finish request okay right so uh, what we are going to do is to check if the file is really being generated and forward to our s3 bucket so we go back to our s3 and click on our s3 bucket yeah, you can see the cameras.json, geojson is right here. The time is 11.42, so it's just upload, okay? So what we are going to do next is to use the CloudWatch to trigger the Lambda function at every time interval. So it can make it automatically update the GeoJSON to be the most real time, to be the most recent GeoJSON that captured by the camera API. Okay, so what we are going to do is uh, using the Cloud Watch. We click on that.
okay so in the CloudWatch what we are going to do is uh, we are going to the events we need to go to the events uh, then we need to create the rooms and we need to use a schedule fixed rate of every how many minutes or how many hours how many days so for example because this is a real time external API we need to make the interval as short as possible uh, but of course for lambda function uh, the shortest time interval it is the more cost you will need to pay okay so just for testing purpose I set it for every one minute and we can see the results so we set the fixed rate of one minute and we need to add the target the target will be the put geojson lambda function we just established and then we click on configure and we just give the rules like um, uh, real time real time geojson for example we give you a name like this okay and then we create a rule so now we can see the green clock has been established which means that um, the schedule has been launched into AWS so every one minute the CloudWatch will trigger the lambda function we just write and then the lambda function we will again request the external API from our API endpoint and then to forward it to S3 via the binary okay so let's take a look at the results now theoretically it will run every it will, it will be scheduled and run um, the number function every minute so what we can see it runs at 11.45 and we just need to wait for a minute to see if it runs yeah we just wait for a sec Yeah, you see now the times become 11.46 because it will be run, the lambda function will be run every one minute. So yeah, the front end can now request and obtain the GeoJSON every one minute. So that these types of the live API, live uh, traffic API um, has been complete, has been implemented. So that's the topic for today. Hope you like it. And if you like it, please just give me a thumb or just um, subscribe my channel. And you are always welcome to join our Associate GIS Club on LinkedIn where you can post your message, share your ideas, and ask any technical questions regarding the GIS and software and data analysis. And we will always respond to your message. And from time to time, we will also share some work opportunities among our GIS network. So hopefully you can see you there. Again, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.